website, um, uh, Mavix's website, Room 362, Egypt's blog, and then uh, Carl Onage, is that Chris Pageant's site? I think. Anyway, but so those are all good Metasploit sites. Uh, also, um, like Elliot was saying, if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, the uh, uh, offensive security classes are the absolute best um, for this type of uh, this type of work. Um, some Metasploit ninjas that you can follow on Twitter. H.D. Moore, Egypt, Mubix, Chris Gates, Dave over here, and Carlos Perez. And if you have any questions, kind of like I said earlier, try harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Does anybody have a real question? <laughs> Martin, do you have, are, you, are you doing the uh, Minnesota Express thing? Oh, crap, I totally forgot. <laughs> Hold on. Does everyone want to see Metasploit Express real quick? Hell yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, what, do we have any confirmation on that deal? Or I'm still, I'm still for it, so. Okay. Can you all, you all just have to give me like two seconds. I tell you what, if anybody does not... Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> That set off an alarm for the If anybody does not want to appear so uh, I'm just gonna scan the subnet just to show everybody. If anybody does not want their computer scanned, just unplug it real quick. Um, just to, to for fast. So um, Metasploit Express works in Windows, Linux, uh, anything you want. Um, it's basically just a web browser type application. Um, I'll show it up here. I'm lame. I just use root tour for my login, so I never forget it. <laughs> anyway, so here's the interface. You just log in. You create a user. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, it's it. This is fairly um, fairly nice. Something that's useful for this that. Um, Dave was talking about earlier is um, once we grab our hash with a hash dump, we could actually put it in here and we could scan entire subnets with that PS execute uh, PS execute exploit, and it would uh, and it would uh, give us I mean however many shells were vulnerable across the network. So if you got you know 255 mach four machines on your network and they all use the same admin password, um, once I had the admin hash, I could effectively own all the machines. I see you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's 640 under my control, and so you can actually all, show you the interface all in the Metasploit, which is really nice. So uh, all you want to do is just create a project name, create a network range, and then you want to create the project. Um, this also integrates perfectly, of course, with Nexpose, since they're both Rapid7 projects. I'll plug that too. Um, if you wanted to, uh, you would have to have Nexpose installed, I think. Um, but if you wanted to, um, there's three different things you can do. The first thing you can do is scan, which is basically an Nmap scan. So we're going to do that, and then maybe I'll talk about it some more. Um, it's generally good to exclude your own address, but I'm not going to, so oh well. So um, you can set the port scan speed. Since we're all friends here, we'll do insane. <laughs> so then you just hit scan. If you had an SMB hash, for example, you could put it right here, or an SMB. So we would put administrator and... Uh, whatever that hash is that we got from the administrator uh, uh, console. So then you just hit scan. Then what happens is you get a task list, comes up over here. And uh, this is basically just host discovery because when you actually run the exploit part, you probably want to trim down. You don't want to just bash up the whole entire subnet unless you really don't like the company, I guess. But anyway, so. And then uh, you can go over here to overview, it'll say scanning, and you can go over here to host. I mean, this is really easy to use. I, I don't have any results yet, but this may take a second. And then, of course, there's the progress. So then uh, the, the kind of the way you would do this is you would do the scan. So, wow, a lot of people didn't unplug their computers. <laughs> So anyway, I got 31 hosts discovered. It's going to tell me the amount of services. Um, the next thing I would want to do is I would want to go to Nexpose and I would want to kind of trim down my list and uh, see if I could find any exploits that uh, match that system. This might take a minute. Hope everybody. Knows. We got 15 minutes, I guess. It'll look 
cool when it's done, I promise. Um, this is still in beta, but um, it's going to, at the same time Metasploit 3.4 comes out, this is going to come out. Um, if you're interested in it, it's $3,000 for a yearly license. Um, but this, uh, and, but it also comes with, you know, support from the actual creators of Metasploit. Um, they have an IRC channel on the free node network in Metasploit. You can go in there and uh, they're nicer about questions than I am. Let's <laughs> 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 well, mention backtrack, of course. Then you're in good shape. Why do you have problem with questions? Say what? <laughs> if you don't keep the channel on topic, it gets all out of hand. Start talking about the club in Fiji last night and everything else. <laughs> anyway, so as you can see, I've got 91 services detected. Um, oh, it's not taking too long. I'm 88% done. Um, the one special VM I had is one that I mentioned earlier. is one that uh, HD Moore gave me. It's actually got four um, really obscure vulnerabilities. So he says, I was only able to make one of them work, but he claims that four of the services on there are vulnerable. So if he says they are, they are. Who am I to say they're not? So I'm not going to go through the next pose part, but next pose actually has a free community edition. Um, so you don't have to pay for that. You can download that. It's a vulnerability scanner. Um, along the same lines as Nexus and Nessus or however you say it, and some of the other ones. Um, generally, you would probably want to use a couple of them, but if you're going to use something like this Metasploit Express, it's better to use this one because it's already integrated. Um, the coolest thing about this is the report, which I'd like to show you at the end. This is just a, this does not take the place for real penetration testing and real exploit development. However, this can dramatically um, speed up some of the processes, and it also makes this really cool report that you can give to the CEO and look cool without a lot of paperwork. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to hit the exploit button. So here's all my target addresses. Um, now once again, I would uh, generally, if, if, I, if I went down this list and I saw you know, I don't really want to attack Dave's machine, which I do. But anyway, so I would exclude his address or my own address or whatever. Um, another thing you can set is what Dave was talking about earlier is now the exploits actually have ratings. Um, so like low means it probably never works, it crashes the box. You know, normal means one out of every five times it crashes the box. Excellent means that generally works every single time. Um, so you can set that. Um, the problem with setting low is that, of course, you're going to bring down half the network. So we're just going to do good, for example. You can do the number of concurrent exploits. I haven't really played around with this all this much, so we'll just leave it at the default. Um, you can only get one shell on each box, but that's no fun, so we'll uncheck that. Um, you can ignore the known fragile devices. Um, I really don't have not investigated that, but I assume it just does that by OS detection, but we'll uncheck that. That's not fun. And then you want to skip exploits that do not match the OS so we don't waste a bunch of time. And then you literally just hit the exploit button. And uh, it's all um, automated. So unfortunately, this might take a minute since there's 971 possible exploits. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get a shell off one of these boxes so I can show you what it looks Here. like. Did I get one? Yeah. So once you get one, you go into here in the Sessions tab. See? So this is the VM that uh, that uh, HDM gave me called Metasploitable. So it's less than a minute old. Oh, there's another one. So and it tells you what the exploit is that got it. So we'll run that run for a minute and see if we get a few more. So far, these are all RBMs, so everybody's in good shape. <laughs> well, anyway, since we're running out of time, we'll just go. You can interact with the session. Oh, there's another. Uh-oh. Oh, that might be mine. Anyway, so, uh, so for example, you can interact with the session. Uh-oh. So you can hit session three. And then you can see there's a variety of options. Um, like, I may just want to collect the system data, which is similar to that WinEnum script. Um, this would be a good thing to not touch the data.